Mark Bennett was a successful 45-year-old entrepreneur living in San Francisco, California. Born and raised in Los Angeles, he grew up in a modest household with hard-working parents who instilled in him the values of perseverance and ambition. Mark excelled academically, earning a scholarship to Stanford University, where he studied business administration. His dedication and sharp intellect quickly set him apart, and upon graduating, he founded his first tech startup. Over the years, Mark built a reputation as a savvy businessman with a keen eye for innovative solutions, eventually becoming a well-respected figure in Silicon Valley. Mark was known for his charismatic and confident demeanor, traits that served him well in both business and personal relationships. Despite his success, he remained humble and approachable, always willing to lend a helping hand to those in need. He had a passion for adventure, often spending his weekends hiking or sailing along the California coast. However, behind his professional facade, Mark yearned for a deeper, more meaningful connection in his personal life. Linda Carter was a vibrant 25-year-old woman from Santa Barbara, California. Growing up in a coastal town, she developed a love for the ocean and spent much of her childhood surfing and exploring the beaches. Linda was the youngest of three siblings and was often described as the free spirit of the family. She attended the University of California, Santa Cruz, where she majored in environmental science. Her love for nature and desire to protect the environment drove her academic and career choices. Linda's personality was a mix of warmth and spontaneity. She had an infectious laugh and a natural ability to make people feel comfortable around her. Despite her carefree exterior, Linda was deeply passionate about her work, dedicating her time to various environmental causes and working as a marine biologist. Her dedication to her job often meant long hours and frequent travel, but she found fulfillment in her contributions to preserving marine ecosystems. On July 30, 2018, Mark and Linda's paths crossed at a beach cleanup event organized by a local environmental group. Mark, always interested in giving back to the community, had decided to volunteer his time for the cause. Linda, on the other hand, was one of the event coordinators, leading a team of volunteers with her usual enthusiasm and energy. As Mark picked up litter along the shore, he couldn't help but notice Linda's infectious spirit and dedication. During a break, they struck up a conversation about their shared love for the ocean and their mutual interest in environmental preservation. Despite the significant age difference, they found themselves drawn to each other's company. Mark was captivated by Linda's youthful exuberance and genuine passion, while Linda was impressed by Mark's wisdom, experience, and the depth of his knowledge. Their connection was immediate and strong, leading to several more encounters at similar events and casual coffee dates. They discovered a shared love for outdoor activities, often spending weekends hiking, kayaking, or simply enjoying each other's company by the sea. Mark and Linda's relationship blossomed over the course of several months. They appreciated each other's company and found solace in their shared passions and interests. Mark admired Linda's free-spirited nature and her ability to live in the moment, which brought a refreshing change to his structured and often hectic life. Linda, in turn, was drawn to Mark's stability, maturity, and the sense of security he provided. Despite their different backgrounds and the 20-year age gap, their relationship felt natural and effortless. They balanced each other out, with Mark offering guidance and support, and Linda bringing a sense of spontaneity and adventure. Friends and family noticed how happy they were together, and despite some initial skepticism due to their age difference, they soon accepted the couple's bond. For two years, Mark and Linda's relationship continued to grow stronger. They traveled together, explored new hobbies, and supported each other's careers. Mark often attended Linda's environmental advocacy events, while Linda became a regular at Mark's business functions, charming his colleagues with her genuine interest and engaging personality. Their love seemed to transcend their age difference, and they began discussing long-term plans, including the possibility of marriage and starting a family. Everything appeared perfect on the surface, but as with any relationship, 
there were underlying tensions and challenges that they needed to navigate together. Little did they know, the arrival of Mark's best friend, John, would soon put their relationship to the ultimate test. John Harris, a 43-year-old architect, was Mark Bennett's best friend since their college days at Stanford University. Born and raised in Reno, Nevada, John came from a modest family background similar to Mark's. He pursued a degree in architecture, driven by his passion for designing innovative and sustainable buildings. Throughout his career, John worked on several high-profile projects, earning a reputation as a talented and meticulous architect. Despite his professional success, John's personal life was tumultuous. He was married for ten years to his high school sweetheart, Emily. However, their marriage deteriorated over time due to irreconcilable differences and constant arguments. The couple eventually divorced, leaving John emotionally drained and seeking a fresh start. In the aftermath of his divorce, John decided to leave Reno and move to San Francisco, hoping to rebuild his life and career in a new environment. Mark, always the supportive friend, encouraged John's decision and offered to help him settle in the city. John took up a position at a renowned architectural firm in San Francisco, eager to immerse himself in his work and leave behind the painful memories of his failed marriage. John was known for his charismatic and easygoing nature. He had a knack for making friends easily and was always the life of the party. However, beneath his cheerful exterior, John carried a sense of loneliness and vulnerability, a lingering effect of his recent divorce. He valued loyalty and trust above all else, and was fiercely protective of the people he cared about. A few weeks after John's move to San Francisco, Mark decided it was time to introduce him to Linda. Mark wanted his best friend to feel included in his new life, and hoped that John and Linda would get along well. He arranged a casual dinner at his favorite seafood restaurant by the bay, inviting both John and Linda. The evening was filled with laughter and engaging conversation. Linda's vibrant personality and genuine interest in John's work quickly broke the ice. John, in turn, was impressed by Linda's passion for environmental conservation and her adventurous spirit. The three of them found common ground in their love for outdoor activities and shared a memorable evening. As weeks went by, John became a frequent guest at Mark and Linda's gatherings. They often invited him on weekend hikes, beach outings, and casual barbecues. The trio formed a close-knit friendship, with John appreciating the warmth and companionship that Mark and Linda provided. John's presence brought a new dynamic to Mark and Linda's relationship. While Mark and John bonded over their shared college memories and professional ambitions, Linda enjoyed having another friend to share her interests with. They spent time together discussing environmental issues, exploring new hiking trails, and even working on small home improvement projects. However, as their friendship deepened, subtle tensions began to emerge. John found himself increasingly drawn to Linda's charm and energy, feelings he struggled to suppress given his loyalty to Mark. Linda, on the other hand, enjoyed John's company and appreciated his support, but remained committed to her relationship with Mark. Despite the growing complexities, the three of them continued to spend time together, unaware of the tragic turn their lives were about to take. As time went on, Mark began to notice subtle changes in the dynamics of his relationship with Linda and his friendship with John. Initially, he dismissed his feelings of discomfort, attributing them to the inevitable adjustments that came with integrating a new person into their lives. However, his unease grew as he observed John and Linda spending more time together, often engaging in activities that excluded him. It all started innocently enough. John, with his recently acquired free time and need for companionship, would often invite Linda to join him for lunch or coffee while Mark was at work. Linda, always enthusiastic about making new friends and supporting John through his post-divorce phase, readily accepted these invitations. They would discuss everything from environmental issues to personal anecdotes, laughing and bonding over shared experiences. Mark didn't mind at first. He trusted Linda implicitly and considered John a brother. But soon, he began to notice patterns that set off alarm bells in his mind. 
Their conversations were peppered with inside jokes he didn't understand, and their shared glances held an intimacy that seemed to exclude him. The private whispers and laughter during gatherings, which used to bring joy, now fueled a growing sense of exclusion and suspicion. Mark's suspicions were further aroused when he found Linda and John engaged in a deep conversation late one evening. They were sitting on the porch, their heads close together, speaking in hushed tones. When Mark joined them, the conversation abruptly shifted to a more general topic, leaving him with the unsettling feeling that they had been discussing something he wasn't meant to hear. His unease grew as Linda started spending more time away from home. She would go for long hikes with John, claiming they were exploring new trails for an environmental project. While Mark wanted to believe her, he couldn't shake the nagging doubt that something else was happening. He began to scrutinize their interactions more closely, looking for any signs that might confirm his fears. The turning point came one Saturday afternoon. Mark had planned a surprise outing for Linda, hoping to rekindle the romance in their relationship. He was shocked to find that she had already made plans with John to visit a newly opened botanical garden. Linda's casual dismissal of his surprise and her eager anticipation for the outing with John left Mark feeling hurt and sidelined. That evening, as Linda and John left for the garden, Mark's thoughts spiraled into dark territory. He couldn't understand why Linda would prefer John's company over his own, and the sense of betrayal gnawed at him. Alone at home, he began to entertain the possibility that there was more to Linda and John's relationship than met the eye. Desperation and jealousy can drive a person to extreme measures. Mark, consumed by his suspicions, decided he needed to find out the truth. He began by tracking Linda's movements, making mental notes of her comings and goings. However, this passive surveillance did little to ease his mind. He needed concrete evidence. One evening, under the guise of working late, Mark installed a listening device in Linda's car. The act felt surreal and wrong, but his desperation for answers outweighed his guilt. He carefully concealed the device under the dashboard, ensuring it would go unnoticed. From that moment on, he could listen in on her conversations whenever she was in the car, hoping to catch any incriminating discussions. Next, Mark installed a tracking app on Linda's phone. He rationalized his actions by telling himself it was for their relationship's sake. He needed to know if his suspicions were valid. The app allowed him to monitor her location in real time, providing him with a sense of control over the situation. Days turned into weeks, and Mark's behavior became increasingly erratic. He would listen to hours of mundane conversations, his anxiety heightening with every word. The tracker on her phone confirmed that she was indeed spending significant time with John, but there was nothing overtly incriminating in their conversations or movements. Then, one fateful evening, as he listened to a recording from Linda's car, he finally heard something that confirmed his worst fears. Linda and John were discussing their feelings for each other. The conversation was filled with emotional confessions, mutual admiration, and a bond that went beyond friendship. John expressed his longing for Linda while she struggled with her loyalty to Mark and her growing feelings for John. Mark felt a mix of rage and heartbreak as he listened to their words. The woman he loved and the friend he trusted were betraying him. The realization that he had lost Linda's heart to his best friend was too much to bear. His jealousy, which had been simmering under the surface, erupted into full-blown anger and resentment. Unable to contain his emotions any longer, Mark confronted Linda that night. He accused her of infidelity, revealing that he had been listening to her conversations and tracking her movements. Linda was shocked and horrified by Mark's invasion of her privacy. She admitted to having developed feelings for John, but insisted that nothing physical had happened between them. The confrontation escalated into a heated argument, with Mark's jealousy and Linda's guilt fueling the fire. Mark felt betrayed and humiliated, while Linda felt cornered and defensive. Their relationship, once filled with love and trust, was now a battlefield of accusations and denials. In a desperate attempt to salvage what was left of their relationship, 
Linda agreed to stop seeing John. She promised to focus on rebuilding her bond with Mark, hoping that time and effort would heal their wounds. However, the damage was done. The seed of doubt had been planted, and Mark's jealousy had taken root, creating a chasm between them that seemed impossible to bridge. The emergence of jealousy marked the beginning of the end for Mark and Linda's relationship. What started as a loving partnership had turned into a toxic web of suspicion and betrayal. Mark's actions, driven by his insecurities, only served to push Linda further away. Despite her efforts to make amends, the trust they once shared was shattered beyond repair. As the tension between them grew, so did the complexity of their relationship with John. The once inseparable trio was now entangled in a dangerous game of emotions, where love, jealousy, and betrayal collided, setting the stage for the tragic events that were yet to unfold. After the tumultuous confrontation between Mark and Linda, the cracks in their relationship deepened, and the atmosphere in their home grew increasingly tense. Linda, feeling suffocated by Mark's jealousy and invasive behavior, decided she needed some space to clear her head and think about their future. She moved out temporarily, staying with a close friend, hoping the distance would give both of them time to reflect and possibly mend their fractured bond. Despite their separation, Mark's suspicions didn't abate. In fact, the absence of Linda only fueled his paranoia. He became obsessed with the idea that Linda and John were continuing their affair behind his back. His mind was a constant whirl of dark thoughts and imagined betrayals, and he found it increasingly difficult to focus on anything else. One fateful evening, Mark's pent-up emotions reached a breaking point. He had spent the day replaying the events of the past few weeks in his mind, his thoughts spiraling into a vortex of jealousy and anger. He decided that he needed to know the truth once and for all. Armed with his suspicions, he set out to find Linda and John, convinced that they were together. Mark drove around the city, his anxiety mounting with each passing minute. He checked the locations he knew Linda frequented, his heart pounding in his chest. It was only when he passed by their favorite cafe, a cozy little place where they used to spend hours talking and laughing, that he spotted them. Through the large windows of the cafe, he saw Linda and John sitting together at a corner table, engrossed in what appeared to be an intimate conversation. Seeing them together ignited a fire within Mark. He parked his car hastily and stormed into the cafe, his eyes fixed on the pair. Linda and John looked up in surprise as Mark approached their table, his face a mask of fury. The confrontation quickly escalated as Mark's anger turned physical. He lunged at John, shoving him hard against the table. John stumbled back, knocking over a chair. The cafe patrons gasped and murmured among themselves, some already reaching for their phones to call the police. John, trying to defend himself, pushed Mark away, but Mark was relentless. He swung a punch, which John barely managed to dodge. Linda screamed, trying to pull Mark away from John, but he was too strong for her to handle. Stop it, Mark, she pleaded, her voice breaking. Please stop. But Mark was too far gone, his vision clouded by a red haze of fury and betrayal. He landed another punch on John, this time connecting with his jaw. John staggered back, blood trickling from his split lip. Just as Mark was about to throw another punch, the cafe manager and a couple of brave patrons intervened, pulling Mark away from John. That's enough, the manager yelled. I've called the police. This has to stop now. Breathing heavily, Mark glared at John and Linda, his chest heaving with the effort to control his rage. You're both dead to me, he spat, before turning on his heel and storming out of the cafe. Left in the aftermath of the confrontation, Linda and John were shaken and distressed. Linda's hands trembled as she reached for a napkin to dab at John's bleeding lip. I'm so sorry, she whispered, her voice choked with tears. I never wanted this to happen. John, wincing from the pain, shook his head. It's not your fault, Linda. Mark's jealousy just got out of hand. The police arrived shortly after, taking statements from the cafe patrons and the manager. Mark was nowhere to be found, having driven off in a rage. 
Linda and John were advised to file a report, but they were too distraught to think clearly. In the following days, Linda struggled with feelings of guilt and remorse. She never intended for things to escalate to this point, but her growing affection for John had complicated everything. John, too, regretted the pain their relationship had caused Mark, but couldn't deny his feelings for Linda. Mark, consumed by his jealousy, descended further into his obsession. He isolated himself from friends and family, spent long hours drinking, and continued to stalk Linda and John, convinced they were flaunting their relationship to spite him. His life spiraled out of control, and he lost his job due to his erratic behavior. One evening, driven by a toxic mix of alcohol and jealousy, Mark decided to confront Linda and John again. He drove to John's apartment, and seeing them together through the window, stormed up to the door. The confrontation was inevitable, and Mark's anger once again turned physical. Linda managed to call the police, who arrived in time to arrest Mark for assault and harassment. The confrontation had devastating consequences for all involved. Linda and John were left to pick up the pieces, their relationship forever changed by the events that had transpired. Mark faced charges and had to confront the consequences of his actions, realizing that his obsession had destroyed not only his relationship with Linda, but also his friendship with John. In the summer of 2020, just a few days after the heated confrontation, tragedy struck in the most brutal way. Linda was found dead in John's apartment. John came home from work to a scene of horror, Linda lying face down in the hallway, her back covered with stab wounds and the floor soaked in her blood. Overwhelmed with shock and grief, he immediately called the police. The police arrived at the scene within minutes, their expressions grim as they surveyed the carnage. The apartment was quickly cordoned off, and forensic teams began their meticulous work, collecting evidence and documenting every detail. The investigators wasted no time in questioning neighbors in the apartment complex. Most of them reported hearing raised voices and a loud argument earlier in the day. One elderly neighbor, Mrs. Jenkins, mentioned seeing a man she didn't recognize leaving the building in a hurry. She described him as agitated and anxious, a description that made the investigators' interest peaked. Given the location of the murder and John's close relationship with Linda, he was initially taken into custody for questioning. John, still in shock, could barely process what was happening. He recounted their last few days together, mentioning how Linda had moved in with him temporarily to get some space from Mark. He told investigators about the altercation at the cafe and at his apartment two days earlier, and how Mark had become increasingly unstable and obsessed with Linda. John's alibi was thoroughly checked. His employer confirmed that he had been at work all day, and security footage from his office building supported this. With John's alibi confirmed, the investigators shifted their focus back to Mark. Mark had been missing since the night of the cafe confrontation, further raising suspicions. His erratic behavior and the violent altercation made him the prime suspect. The investigators knew they needed to find him quickly before he could cause more harm. After several hours of searching, they traced Mark to a seedy motel on the outskirts of the city. He was found in a disheveled state, reeking of alcohol and muttering incoherently about betrayal and love. The police arrested him without incident, and he was taken to the police station for questioning. At the station, Mark was initially uncooperative, alternating between bouts of anger and tearful outbursts. The investigators laid out the evidence against him, emphasizing the witness statements and his previous threats against Linda and John. Slowly, the gravity of the situation seemed to penetrate Mark's fog of rage and despair. During the interrogation, the police noticed fresh scratches on Mark's neck. These scratches indicated that Linda might have fought back during the attack, trying to defend herself against her assailant. This physical evidence was crucial, as it suggested a violent struggle. Forensic experts collected DNA samples from under Linda's fingernails, hoping to match them with Mark's DNA. They also took swabs from the scratches on Mark's neck, seeking to establish a direct connection between him and the victim. Additionally, they collected his clothing for forensic analysis, suspecting they might find traces of Linda's blood. Despite the mounting evidence, Mark vehemently denied any involvement in Linda's murder. 
The police conducted a thorough search of Mark's home and car, looking for any additional evidence that might link him to the crime scene. They found several items of interest, including a blood-stained towel that matched the description of the one used to clean up the murder scene. This discovery further implicated Mark in Linda's death. Meanwhile, the forensic team continued their work at John's apartment, meticulously analyzing every piece of evidence they collected. They found several key pieces of evidence, including fingerprints and DNA samples that pointed directly to Mark. The investigators were building a strong case against him, but they needed more to secure a conviction. The investigators also revisited the witness statements, cross-referencing them with the timeline of events on the day of the murder. They confirmed that Mark had been near the crime scene at the time of the murder, further cementing their suspicions. As the days passed, the pressure on Mark grew. He was subjected to intense questioning, with investigators probing every aspect of his relationship with Linda and John. They delved into his past, uncovering a history of violent outbursts and obsessive behavior. This information painted a disturbing picture of a man capable of committing such a heinous crime. Despite the overwhelming evidence, Mark maintained his innocence. He insisted that he had nothing to do with Linda's death and that he was being falsely accused. His refusal to cooperate only strengthened the investigators' resolve to uncover the truth. The forensic analysis of the evidence collected from the crime scene was conclusive. The DNA samples from under Linda's fingernails matched Mark's DNA, providing irrefutable proof of his involvement in the struggle that led to her death. The blood-stained towel found in Mark's possession also contained Linda's blood, further linking him to the crime. With this damning evidence, the investigators had enough to charge Mark with Linda's murder. He was formally arrested and taken into custody, awaiting trial. The case against him was strong, and the investigators were confident that justice would be served. John, still reeling from the loss of Linda, struggled to come to terms with the events that had unfolded. He felt a deep sense of guilt, knowing that his relationship with Linda had driven Mark to such extreme actions. The weight of this tragedy was almost too much to bear. As the investigation progressed, the community watched in shock and disbelief. The story of love, jealousy, and betrayal that had led to Linda's brutal murder captivated the public, and the trial of Mark promised to be a dramatic and emotional affair. Mark's trial was scheduled to begin in early 2021. The prosecution was prepared to present a compelling case, supported by the overwhelming forensic evidence and witness testimony. The defense, on the other hand, faced an uphill battle, given the strength of the evidence against Mark. Throughout the trial, the courtroom was filled with tension and emotion. John and other family members attended every session, their faces etched with sorrow and pain. The prosecution laid out the events leading up to Linda's murder, painting a vivid picture of Mark's descent into jealousy and rage. Mark's defense team attempted to cast doubt on the prosecution's case, but the evidence was too compelling. The DNA evidence, the witness statements, and Mark's own behavior all pointed to his guilt. The jury deliberated for several days before returning a verdict of guilty. Mark was sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole. The verdict brought some measure of closure to Linda's family and friends, but the scars of this tragedy would remain for a long time. In reflecting on the tumultuous events that unfolded between Mark, Linda, and John, it is clear that trust and communication are the bedrock of any relationship. Mark's initial joy and fulfillment were marred by jealousy and suspicion, leading to invasive actions that ultimately damaged the bond he cherished. Linda and John's growing connection highlighted the complexities of human emotions and the challenges of maintaining balance in relationships involving close friends. This case serves as a haunting reminder of the dark side of human emotions. Jealousy, when allowed to fester, can distort reality and lead to actions with devastating consequences. It underscores the importance of communication, trust, and addressing insecurities within relationships. Mark's tragic downfall is a lesson in how quickly love can turn into a destructive force when overshadowed by distrust and obsession. In the end, the story of Mark, Linda, and John 
is a poignant narrative of love, jealousy, and betrayal. It's a stark reminder of the fragile nature of human relationships and the catastrophic consequences that can arise when negative emotions are left unchecked. As I reflect on this case, I am struck by the profound impact of our actions on those we love and the importance of seeking help before our emotions lead us down a path from which there is no return.